Hey, y'all. Howdy, howdy, howdy. Today is going to be a day of information. We are going to inform you, and I hope that we are going to help you to protect what is yours, whether it be your bank account, your savings account, the money you have hidden in a mayonnaise jar in the, in the dresser drawer, you know, whatever. Um, we have a, a very young, very handsome detective with us today. <laughs> Tell us a little bit about you and what you do in Pickens County. My name is Joseph Price. I'm a detective with the Pickens County Sheriff's Office. And what I generally specialize in is elder abuse uh, to deal with fraud and a lot of these online scams that we see nowadays. You know, I think about elder abuse as somebody not being good to their grandmother or not taking her to the store, not doing, but you see the real deal of true elder abuse, don't you? That's true. Um, a lot of times it is an immediate family member taking advantage of the grandparent or their, their parent, but more often than not, we're seeing a lot of international folks committing these scams mm -hmm. and frauds. And how do they find us or them or any other elder? How do they find them? How do they locate them? Well, nowadays in, a digital, in the digital age, your information is bought and sold mm -hmm. um, electronically. Uh, there's companies out there, Google, for instance, is nothing but an information matrix. Right. Where all of our metrics of where we shop, what we like, what we view on the internet uh, is all stored. Mm -hmm. And there's folks out there that acquire this information. So. It's so weird. I was riding down the road with my bestie and we got our cell phones laying on the console between us and we mentioned a product that we would like to look for and shop for. And then we both looked at our cell phones and it popped up on Facebook in two seconds. So are they hearing everything that we communicate with even if our phone is laying there and we're not talking on that phone? Can that phone pick up everything we discuss? I honestly don't have, I don't understand uh, how Google works or your phone works. I mean, it was the uh, product that we were but, talking about and yeah. both our phones, she has an Android, I have a iPhone. And we just, and we looked at our phones and said, oh my gosh. It's That's, like Big Brother really is watching. Absolutely. Yeah. Now, nowadays, you know, you're never, you can never be too safe or too secure mm -hmm. in, you know, your, your possessions, your information. Um, you want to keep all of that close to your, mm -hmm. keep, keep it all close. I think your heart is in your job. And, and when you find out that elderly folks have lost $200,000, that's non-recoverable. How do you handle going home at night and not thinking and worrying and wanting to go after the bad guy when you can't get the bad guy because he's in where? It could be India, Pakistan, China, Taiwan. Uh, a lot of these crimes, once the money has been wired or left our country, there's very little we can do. Um, our teeth aren't large enough to make it across the pond. How sad. Um, however, in 2020 alone, it's estimated about $3 billion uh, was lost due to scams. Uh, Georgia being a top state in that with approximately $26 million. So, and that's, we have a large elder population and uh, the COVID virus has also isolated them even more to right. where they're more susceptible mm -hmm. to falling for You're lonely for and these you want to talk to somebody. Exactly. And a nice young man calls and he strikes up a conversation and mm -hmm. says, I'm your Amazon representative and you have a, a breach and we need to change your password and we need to do whatever and they fall for it. Yes, ma'am. I don't get it because I am trying to, when I look at my phone, I question everything now because mm -hmm. I know people that this has happened to and I question everything. How do we, how, what can you do to, to explain to people they're not your friend. They're not, so, so what is safe and what is not safe? So the only preventative measure that I can come up with is that you have to establish a good defense. If somebody calls you requesting information or for you to send them money um, or there's some sort of urgency, if it doesn't sound right, mm -hmm. doesn't smell right, it's probably not right. right. Um, common sense, there's no legitimate business or government entity that's going to call you and request you to send money. And another thing, a lot of times when you're asked to send money, they request it in gift cards. Oh yeah, can you uh, imagine? Bitcoin, yeah. 
Yeah, that, that's yeah. what blows my mind, that people did fall for that. Yes. Because yeah. it's like, okay, if my grandson is in jail in somewhere else and you're telling me I need to send a bondsman money for him, why does the bondsman want gift cards? You know, it's like it, it, it is common sense. Exactly. It, and, you know, one thing they do is they are very personable and they do try and create yeah. a sense of urgency. Yeah. So yeah. You're, you're taken off balance and you're not yeah. thinking about what you're doing. Yeah. And they will actually coach you and tell you what to say so you don't trigger any flags when you're making these purchases or sending money. Mm -hmm. so. You know, I was getting a call about once or twice a week and it was, hey, grandmama, this is, and I'm going, uh, no, this ain't my grandson because your accent does not match my family tree. And well, I'm like, no, but I got that often. One thing that they'll do is, is that's, that's called the grandparent scam. And the grandparent scam, uh, somebody will call you posing as a family member um, in some sort of financial distress, whether they're in jail or have medical bills um, or they need money for rent. And uh, they'll ask you to remain this secret so their parents mm -hmm. don't, don't find tell out. Mom and daddy. Yeah. But yeah. the way that they garner immediate support from the grandparent is they say grandma or grandpa mm -hmm. and the grandparent will guess which grandchild sounds the most familiar mm -hmm. and immediately mm -hmm. say their name. Mm -hmm. So you've just given them an alias. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And yeah, that happened to me several times. And, and thank goodness he and I were not the same culture. So it, yeah. I knew he was not a redneck, I'll just say that. So, <laughs> and it was crazy and this, it kept happening day after day and week after week for about a month and then they gave up on me, so, but it's crazy. Now, when these calls come in, um, do you immediately hang up? Do you call law enforcement? Do you keep them on the line and try to trace their calls? What, is there anything we can do to stop this? Because a lot of this is international, mm -hmm. the best thing to do is, is if you get a suspicious phone call, hang up the phone. Mm -hmm. um, if it's legitimate, they'll find a legitimate way to contact you. Um, Don't stay if, online with them and let them learn. Exactly. Yeah. Now, if you're on your computer and someone remotes in and begins chatting with you or you open an email that you shouldn't open, um, immediately disconnect your computer mm -hmm. from the Internet. So that way mm -hmm. they're unable to make access to it to withdraw any information that they might want. Wow. Okay, when these things happen and they basically wipe out an elderly person's, mm -hmm. their, their retirement, their income, where do they go next? What do they do? What's available for them? Well, there's a few things that need to be done. Um, an adult protective services referral can be done, mm -hmm. so that way APS can begin their investigation. Mm -hmm. Notify your local law enforcement, and uh, there's also a website an FBI website called IC3. So just, it's just those three letters, or two letters, one number, IC3.gov. And you can fill out a form which is gonna notify the FBI that you've been scammed. Mm -hmm. And I'm not sure what their metrics are and what they're going to do with that information. Um, but like I said, once you've been scammed, if it's international, there's very little that we'll be able to do to recover your funds. Mm -hmm. If you've wired money or they've extracted money, you need to contact your financial institution immediately and ask them to enact a swift recall. Mm -hmm. And sometimes um, you usually have a 72 hour period where the wire transfer might possibly be able to be reversed mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If, if you're lucky enough. Right. So. You know, one of the things about this is many of the elderly people are really embarrassed that this has happened yes. to them. And they don't want their children to know and so they're left with nothing and they have to fend for themselves or live on what little bit is left and they don't want their children to, to come in and say, Mom and Dad, you shouldn't have done this. The best thing you can do is set up that support system of your children. Absolutely. Let them be your power of attorney. Let them handle your finances. Let them take the burden and the worry from you. Yes, and if you do have a parent or a family member or a friend who is getting older and you're, you're concerned about what they might possibly do with their finances, have that conversation. Um, it, it doesn't have to be a family person, it just has to be a trusted individual. Mm -hmm. Right. So. Now, when, when this happened in Pickens County, were you kind of like, really, this is happening? And then it happened over and over and over. Yes. How many cases have you had to work? 
I can't count the amount of cases since I've been working at Pickens wow. County uh, that wow. come through. Um, some are somewhat benign, um, just a phone call, maybe a couple hundred dollars. Mm -hmm. Others up to the amount of two hundred thirty-three thousand dollars that we've seen recently. Oh my gosh. Um, and it's it's sad. And that's like life altering, destroying a lot. It is yeah. absolutely. You yeah. know, you, you worked hard your whole life, you saved mm -hmm. money, and you have money in a nest egg that is supposed to support you through your elder years, and and now it's gone. It's and gone. what do you do? I, it's gone. Exactly. Well. Um, I laughed about this, but there's nothing to laugh about. I was watching one of the talk shows, and they had a woman on there. I think it was Dr. Phil. They had a woman on there whose daughter had brought her to Dr. Phil because the woman had started a relationship with a gentleman in Africa who had contacted her the same way, and he was going to arrange for her to come there. And so she sent enough money there to buy him a car. Then she sent enough money there to buy him another car because he needed a car for her when she arrived in Africa. Now this lady was retired, had um, some pretty good benefits from her retirement, had a federal job, and had some cash. He wiped her completely out, but she never gave up on this man. And I said, that's what's so sad. She was so lonely that she kept saying, but he cares about me. He wants me to be with him. He does this, he does that. Well, they ended up bringing a picture up of the man that he was supposed to be and brought that man there, and it wasn't him at all. And They had stolen his photo and sent that photo to her. So it's not just money that's stolen, it's heartache, too, because she had developed a relationship with this person on a computer. And I thought, how heartbreaking is that? And her daughter said it was over $200,000 that he had wow. scammed out of her and they didn't get any of the money back. Well, it's funny you mentioned that right here I have a case that came across my desk just on Friday. It was a romance scam. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, somebody posing as a soldier um, and essentially when he retired would begin a relationship with this person mm -hmm. and was able to gain trust mm -hmm. and receive that person's bank account oh information. And she was out several thousand dollars. Oh my gosh. And she's never met this gentleman yeah, it's yeah. A, these are very conniving people. Yeah, that they're very good at building trust. Yeah, yeah it's and when when they were reading the letters that this man had written to her, and it was like a page long of you know, and it was just oh, I can't wait to endear you and be with you and da da da, all these words you want to hear if you're sitting at home lonely, and I'm just the opposite. I don't want to hear that crap. I want to watch my money and I want to take care of my money. You know, Absolutely. but it blew my mind because the the woman's daughter kept saying, Mom. Do you not see this is the real man? This is the picture that was sent to you. This is not the man you've been conversing with. And the mother just, no, he, he loves me and I love him and I want to be with him. And I was like, holy cow. It's scary. Very scary. It's very scary. Very scary. Now with this one, with the romance, do you, um, you know, if he only got a few thousand dollars, is there any way to stop that? Can you trace him? Can you find, is no, there any, any chance? No, ma'am. Generally, by the time something like this gets reported, um, the person, the victim is embarrassed. Mm -hmm. um, they generally don't report this immediately. And reporting something quickly is the most important part of possibly mm -hmm. receiving your money back. It's very unlikely though, once, you, once they've gotten control of your money, that you'll get it back though, because sure. it's been wired overseas. Or that you'll hear from yeah. them again. Or that you'll hear from them yeah, again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And nowadays, um, you can obtain a phone number via Google. Uh, there's multiple applications that somebody can get multiple phone numbers. And a lot of times you'll see that this scammer is not just scamming you, he's mm -hmm. scamming several other people mm -hmm. using different phone numbers, different names, different Facebook accounts. It's, it's almost impossible to track this person down. Yeah. Um, they, can, they have applications now that on a single IP address can change several phone numbers um, within minutes. Wow. So even tracking them down is very difficult. It's crazy, it's crazy. Now you said $3 billion a year is that's, lost. And that's just what we know about because like you said, a lot of these victims Don't are embarrassed. Don't report it, yeah. Um, I would be embarrassed if I were to have given away my savings mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. maybe I wouldn't want anybody to know yeah. the position that yeah. I was in. Yeah. Well, it, you know, there are all kinds of scams going out there from, um, I, I know a gentleman who, a lady, 
walked near him in the grocery store and she said, oh, do you need some help with your groceries? And he was in his upper 80s. And she said, oh, let me help you, let me help you. Then she gets him to the car and then she says, well, let's exchange phone numbers. Well, she ended up at the last part of his life putting him in a bedroom in an older mobile home she had in Pickens County. And when he died, she got everything and he had quite a bit. And she became his caretaker, but she really became his possessor. And he didn't have anybody else. He had no children. His wife had passed. And she ended up with everything. And they owned quite a bit of property. But it was, she just befriended him in a grocery store. So it doesn't have to be an internet scam. No. It could be somebody just seeing you and attaching themselves to you. Now, in a situation like that, law enforcement has a lot more teeth. Um, we have the ability to utilize Adult Protective Services. Adult mm -hmm. Protective Services, in their investigation, um, they can pull bank records very easily. Mm -hmm. And what you're looking for is undue influence. Mm -hmm. And undue influence is essentially you're in a caretaker position. However, you're influencing that person to do things that um, will have a negative effect on the care being provided. Mm -hmm. um, also, if the caretaker is using money from the victim um, for personal gain, that's also illegal. Right. Um, although the bank or somebody might say, well, the victim gave the account information to the suspect, but that money is to be used for taking care of the victim, mm -hmm. not for whatever it is that the bad guy is using it for. Yeah, and I told you about the case we had where I had Bank of America do a forensic audit. They found all the money that had disappeared, like $880,000, was taken from the one heir that did have the ability to get her card. And they said, we can't do anything about it because she gave him permission to have that card. Well, that's just the analysis of the bank records could prove differently. Mm -hmm. so. it's, it's scary because you trust, you know, whether it be your caretaker or maybe a neighbor or, and, and you want to trust people and you want to develop relationships. And, you know, it's when you're sitting at home alone and somebody calls on the phone and they're pleasant and they're friendly. Yes, ma'am. It's, it's kind of an easy, easy hack, isn't it? You it can is. just get them, yeah. And unfortunately, we don't like to talk about it, but as we age, uh, we lose a lot of our cognitive ability to make decisions. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, and, you know, I equate it the best to, you know, my grandparents changed my diapers, and at the end of their life, I changed my grandparents' diapers. Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. The roles have to switch. Yeah, and we right. have to be cognizant of our elder population mm -hmm. and what they're going through. Yeah. So. And we know if you go to the grocery store in these mountains, our population is probably 65 to 70 percent elderly because a lot of people retired to the mountains. Yes, ma'am. And um, we found recently there are no nursing homes with any availability, none. It's like a waiting list that's years old. And um, assisted living, a lot of people are going in assisted living. Now, the people that you worked with that lost so much money, does that change their lifestyle forever? Absolutely. Um, yeah. If you've saved up $200,000 and based and planned your elder life around that $200,000 mm -hmm. with it what being gone, exactly, yeah. Yeah. you're going to be living in a lot less, um, a lot lower position than you, know, you had intended. Yeah. So it's so not like they could just go back to work. If you have elderly parents, tell the kids out there what they can do to protect their parents. Absolutely. If you do have a a parent who is advancing in age, uh, you need to have these conversations. You have to talk with them about their finances. Find out if they have a pen pal. Find out who's communicating with your parents. That's, that's the biggest thing. Mm -hmm. um, know their a, passwords to their computer. Absolutely. Get a power of attorney. <coughs> um, be put on their bank accounts and monitor those bank accounts the way mm -hmm. that you monitor. I, I know I check mine at least once a day. Mm -hmm. I've been a victim of uh, fraud. Mm -hmm. and. It's scary. There's also a do not that, call. That's almost funny. Yeah. It's not funny. But you're a detective and you've been a victim of fraud. Yeah. Because they will get anybody. I'm not. You know? Yeah, they just somehow got my bank information yeah. and yeah. I went to uh, the store to buy a sandwich and I had no money in my no account. Money. So, yeah. <laughs> oh, gosh. And, uh, oh, my gosh. Yeah. And, but do not call.gov. So what that does is it forbids telemarketing agencies to utilize your phone number. Mm -hmm. So that way they're not going to sell it to others and they're not allowed to call you. 
So if you do get a call from a telemarketer, then you know it's a scam mm -hmm. because you know, the criminals are not going to abide by the same rules right. as a legitimate business. And how do you get on there? You just go to that and register your number? Yes, ma'am. Do not call .gov. And is it really working? Is it helping people? Because uh, I was on that do not call list and it seems like I get more calls now than I've ever gotten. That's honestly it's interesting. That, yeah, that, I don't have any control over I that. I think they go around so many things. They probably do and there's so many, you know, nowadays we don't have people for the most part coming door to door trying to sell us things. It's all digital mm -hmm. and how they gather that information <clears> is, <throat> is further than my knowledge level. And it's kind of weird because the the internet has made our lives a little bit easier, especially mm -hmm. during COVID, because we can order groceries, we can, you know, buy supplies, we can even order a television online. But it also put everything we do out there for somebody else to see. Yes. And it made many, many people victims. When you think about, um, have there been any large cases where the money was returned? Do you know of any? I have not dealt with any international case, which is generally where you see the largest amounts taken mm -hmm. um, where the money has been reserved uh, excuse me returned um, i have seized money that was in transit mm -hmm. and due to there being multiple victims once that's been has gone to court the court will establish which victims are going to receive the money mm -hmm. so there, like i said there's a chance it's just a very slim chance in that particular case, that was a, a lottery publishing clearinghouse scam. Wow. Yes. and Because uh, everybody going on. wants to win the lottery and everybody wants Absolutely. to win Publishers Clearinghouse. But, yeah. what, you know, one quick clue, if you haven't entered or you haven't played or bought a particular ticket, how would you have won? That's right. And we had folks, I guess I should start from the beginning on this one. This is actually a large one, and that really opened our eyes. Mm -hmm. um, we received information out of Virginia that there was um, somebody in the county scamming folks. Uh, we in conducted Dickens County? Yes, ma'am. We conducted an uh, investigation, took out a search warrant, and this gentleman had been a mule for the scammers for about 10 years. Wow. Um, one month wow. of transaction averaged $54,000 at one point, mm -mm. and he had been doing this for 10 years. Uh, which is impossible to quantify because there's no way I could. Oh yeah, oh yeah. But millions we, and millions. Absolutely, yeah. there were yeah. and there were several thousand dollars in transit, uh, some in the accounts which we seized and some in cash at the house, mm -hmm. stacks of gift cards, and uh, an abundance of mail, and wow. and something like that is. In Pickens County. In Pickens County. That is crazy. Unfortunately, this man was merely a mule and he was mm -hmm. actually in on, he was not part of the scam as much as he was being scammed too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, he, he legitimately thought that he was going to get his winnings oh my goodness. if he performed these tasks. Oh my goodness gracious. Yeah. And That's crazy. You know, we all know legitimate business does not operate like that. Yeah. yeah. Uh, nobody, the contractors are another big one, but uh, so. One of the things that we've heard a lot lately, a lot of people are getting social security scam calls. Yes. And that's a big thing because everybody worries about your social security. Am I gonna get my check on time? Is it gonna be here? Are they gonna give me a raise? Da, 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 da. So when they call and say, hi, I'm with social security, of course you're gonna talk to them. Mm -hmm. And you're gonna give them any information they want. Yep. Wrong, you shouldn't do that. Nope, uh, <laughs> no, the social that. security department's not going to call you on the phone and ask you for it. They already have your information. Right, Why? right. So if somebody is phishing for information, it, it, now that you're armed with this knowledge, it should be easy to just hang up the phone. Mm -hmm. No government agency is going to call you and request information about mm -hmm. you for a case that they have mm -hmm. or about your account mm -hmm. because they already have it. Right. Um, they know more about you than you know about you. They do. <laughs> yeah, they do. Yeah, yeah. Another one that I've seen lately is uh, people calling with the power company. And, and I love when they'll call and say, uh, we're with Georgia Power and we're going to turn your power off if you don't give us $650 right now, da 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 da, -da. Mm -hmm. Well, no, I'm actually with Amicalola, dummy, you know. And so sometimes they hit on it, sometimes they don't. But mm -hmm. most of the time they say, you're a power company. Yes, so. and we all know that we get a bill in the mail from mm -hmm. the power company mm -hmm. with a letterhead 
and an address. Mm -hmm. Now, if you do get one of these phone calls, by all means, research the company that is calling you and call their legitimate 1-800 number mm -hmm. and corroborate what the person on the phone is saying. Um, just to, might as well cover all your bases. Yeah. For instance, um, an example, a personal example, I had to do a wire transfer myself last week. Instead of just transferring the money with the piece of paper they gave me, I, I took the piece of paper, I looked up the business name that I was transferring the money to, and mm -hmm. I made sure that that was indeed a legitimate business mm -hmm. and the transfer was good to go. Because you've been there, done that, and seen it that, all. Absolutely. Yeah. That's, yeah. You know, uh, that's another thing. If you're buying a home and you're, you have to uh, wire transfer a large sum of money to the closing attorney. Two weeks ago, we had that case. $400,000. Okay. And it's becoming more prevalent. $400,000. They found it and got it, but it was $400,000. It was, yeah. That's scary. It's a lot of money. Very scary. It's not money yeah. you can recover from no, generally. No, yeah. no. And, and that's something that you, you trust your attorney is doing your closing. Mm -hmm. And so we trust our attorneys. But the wiring thing, I don't know how they're going around that. Well, I'm not sure how they're getting the information, but when it was time for me to set up my wire transfer, I also received some scam emails mm -hmm. uh, with the word wire transfer in them, mm -hmm. which I mm -hmm. ignored. There's, there's mm -hmm. no reason to open an email that you're uncertain about. Mm -hmm. So, like I said, your best, you know, your, your best offense is a good defense, mm -hmm. essentially. <clears throat> well, I turned my phone off while we were doing this interview, and I'm going to turn it back on now, and I'm going to see how many of these I've gotten today. <clears throat> because usually when I turn my phone back on, then all of a sudden I get multiples of they want me to do this and this and this and this and um, that they want me to change a password or, and it's just crazy. And it doesn't take, sometimes I question it. And sometimes I read it and go, well, I do have, well, nah, but then I just delete it because I'm terrified of all of them now. You, you know, you I've seen it happen everything. on every avenue, yeah. So let's see how many I got today as we were sitting here. Okay, we're gonna go. Okay. Da, 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 da. Okay, those are good ones. Now we're gonna go to my junk mail. And we're gonna see that I probably have 700 or so. Okay, this is a Russian one. This is, um, this is the Shark Tank wanting me to do something. This is, um, da, da, da. let's see what else I've gotten. Uh, this is Quicken Loans wanting me to give them information. I don't have a Quicken Loans. This is um, a casino. I don't gamble either. Um, this is they want me to unlock my iPhone, and um, they'll work on it. This is, um, let's see. Billing for an incident to split shared visit service. Well, I haven't split or done anything. Uh, this is, uh, da, 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 da. let's see. Internet security, take control of your device protection. I probably would like to do that. Um, and here, they're trying to unlock my phone again. Here's another loan request. Here's another iPhone to unlock my phone. Here's another, um, Let's see, another loan request from Quicken. It's, you know, it's over and over and over. I wouldn't open any of these. So out of, let's see how many I got today. I got um, 89 this morning since I turned my phone off. So let's delete all of those. Edit, select all, delete. Out of 89, it was all BS. Absolutely. Yeah. People 89. are just going to constantly attempt to yeah. lure you in. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's yeah. crazy. It's crazy. Well, right now, we're going to take a commercial break, and we're going to go to our sponsors, and we want you to remember our sponsors. And i got, I got to say a howdy this morning to my precious, precious friend, Ed Singleton. I saw him yesterday at Mike's Restaurant, and I got a big bear hug from him, and it was so good to see him. And I love you, Ed. I love you. I love you. And I hope you're going to be doing well today and have a great, great day. And um, y'all just... Remember that um, we don't know what tomorrow is going to bring, but we know who controls tomorrow. So hang around. We're going to take a commercial break, and we'll be back in just a couple of minutes.
Whether you're in the mood for chicken strips, a delicious burger, our classic banana split, or an upside down thick blizzard treat, we've got you covered. Hot and fresh food every day, every time. And delicious DQ soft serve make the perfect pair at your favorite place. Not fast food, fan food fast. Your Blue Ridge, Ella Day, and Jasper Dairy Queens are your meet, eat, and treat headquarters. Thank you for choosing DQ. How may I serve you? Georgia Medical Treatment Center now has two locations to bring you the high quality holistic care you've come to know and expect. We treat neck, back, and joint pain with chiropractic care and injection based treatment without the need for surgery or prescription painkillers. Our medical weight loss program can also provide relief while ridding your body of toxins, pounds, and inches while improving your overall health. Call today for a free consultation, 770-345-2000, or go online to georgiamtc.com. Most of us are in touch with the internet in one way or another all day long. A fast, secure connection matters. It keeps us entertained, informed, in touch. ETC cares about your connection. We know strong, reliable internet with your choice of speeds makes life better. If you need an upgrade or just have a question, get in touch. Call or visit etcnow.com today. Whether you're swimming in the sea or splashing in the pool, making a masterpiece or just making memories, writing a great American novel, or writing your term paper that's due tomorrow. Whatever you do in life, Farmers is here to protect it. For all your insurance needs, call Donald Curtis in Blue Ridge. Okay, we're back. Y'all, I've got to encourage you. Don't stop talking to people. Don't start becoming all sheltered up, but be very, very protective. Reach out to your children. If you're an older adult and you have children that you could trust to put on your accounts, and, and that's a whole other story because I told you a story about a, a man who, um, the only child of a lady, took everything she had. And there was no recourse because the bank told me that he had her permission to have the card. That's really scary. So protect yourself, but at the same time, don't isolate yourself to a point that you're not living life. Um, these elderly people are set for life maybe with their retirement or with annuities or whatever. When that disappears, there's nowhere for them to go to work and recapture this money. And that's what's so heartbreaking about this. They can't just get out today and get a better job. Many of them aren't able to. Absolutely, it, they depend on that money. It destroyed them. To yeah. sustain their life, mm -hmm. whether it be medical bills, food, um, mortgage or rent, mm -hmm. and uh, things have only gotten more expensive due to inflation. So it, we have you know smaller issues that just combine into larger issues. Yeah. Uh, people will forego medical procedures and, and medications in order to keep feeding this dream that they have or, or sending money to this romance scammer or sending money to um, their son, you know, who is just doing nothing but feeding off of them. Mm -hmm. and, uh, What's the most common scam you've seen? Oh boy, I would say there's a multitude of them. Um, for instance- Is uh, there an easy one that everybody falls for? The easiest one, I, because these people, this is all they do. All this is their careers, scamming oh, yeah. people. Yeah. They're not just calling you. Mm -hmm. So they're they're changing their you know possibly changing their dynamics every every time. Um, the lottery. I would say the lottery scam based on that one investigation. And see, I haven't seen that one. So explain okay. that to me. So the lottery scam. Essentially, somebody's going to reach out to you via phone, email, um, possibly snail mail, and say that you've won something. Whether it's a publisher's clearinghouse sweepstakes. Uh, some form of lottery and what they're going to do is they're going to request from you an initial payment mm -hmm. to secure your winnings 
Um, some one of the excuses I've seen used multiple Actually, times. I know a gentleman in Florida who sent twenty five thousand yep. dollars to something like that. I and, do know that. And what they'll do is they'll say, well, this initial payment is for you to pay your taxes on your winnings. Mm -hmm. And if you are willing to send that money, then they they've got you in the bag mm -hmm. because now you're invested. Now you've already sent money. And when they request you to send money a second and a third and a fourth time, you're likely to do it because you've already made this initial investment. Mm -hmm. And uh, you And it would take delusional. you out of the game if you don't send the next Absolutely. payment. Absolutely. Gosh. And I, I've seen, I, I've seen people, you know, I, I the largest one that I've seen, um, an elderly woman paid $117,000, <gasps> her entire nest egg, to these lottery scammers, um, who had foreign accents. And you're kidding me. I'm not kidding. $117,000, and the only reason she called law enforcement was not to make a report, but she wanted me to convince them to finally give her her winnings. Oh no! So, and there was no recourse. There was no recourse, and there were we had there was nothing that we could do about it except report it to the FBI, because uh, it was international. Wow! So while we've been sitting here this morning in an hour, there are probably multiple scams going on in Pickens County. Absolutely. And those folks grab the phone, grab their cup of coffee this morning, and somebody is trying to take advantage of them. Um, is there something like my phone says spam risk, you know, on a home line, is there something that you could do on there that you would know it's a spam risk? Is there, and I'm not sure how my phone identifies that, but more, more phone calls a day say spam risk to me than anything. Can, can that be a warning on everybody's phone? Honestly, I, you would have to talk to your particular provider and see what options they have as far as notifying you of potential scams. Mm -hmm. um, I don't have that information at this time, but I'll find it for you. Yeah, I think that would be, they need to know because when I look down, it says spam risk. I just don't answer it. I just let it ring. Absolutely. You know, I'm not gonna mess with it. I'm not gonna waste my time mm -hmm. or energy. Um, and it happens quite often during the day. So, um, and I don't know if it's because it's my cell phone, I'm not sure why, but it's nice that I look down and say, mm, I'm not answering that one. Well, you know, example is the, uh, the car warranty. Oh my God. Your extended warranty. Oh my God. <laughs> well, you know. It, 30 times a day. If you ask them and you say, well, which car? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, you tell me what kind of car you have. Well, yeah. sir, you called me telling me my warranty was. Yeah, yeah, know, yeah. And, uh, it, it's all fictitious. All of these things are methods for bad guys to take your money. Mm -hmm. They're nothing more than that. Mm -hmm. And you have to have a good defense. Um, and it's as simple as not answering mm -hmm. and not opening an email and not complying with something that doesn't sound right. Mm -hmm. um, if you are concerned about the information they've given you, um, look up the Better Business Bureau if they're a contractor. Mm -hmm. uh, Another scam we see a good bit is contractor scams, and that, that's something we could generally do something about. Tell me about that. Well, a contractor scam, um, well, a contractor will go around and, and sell jobs. Mm -hmm. They might advertise on Facebook Marketplace versus having like a legitimate website. Mm -hmm. um, don't purchase contractors off of you know, Facebook, Facebook Marketplace, mm -hmm. because a lot of times these folks don't have a legitimate business, and that's why they're advertising on Facebook, mm -hmm. um, but what they might do, some of the characteristics of that are, they'll go around and, and request uh, to do work on your property, whether mm -hmm. it's asphalt the driveway or do, do yard work or mm -hmm. rebuild a deck, um, and they'll ask for money up front. Well, it, generally, you don't pay until services have been rendered, so mm -hmm. if somebody's asking you for money up front, there's a good chance that it's, it's a scam. Mm -hmm. Um, I had a case where a gentleman posed as having a flooring company and he went all around the state of Georgia selling floors. He would take a large 20% down payment and then just leave town. Wow. And wow. Uh, as I started looking into him more and more um, and calling other, other agencies, they were also looking into him mm. all the way from South Georgia to North Georgia. Wow. And I believe, um, Eastern Alabama as well. Mm -hmm. And and at the same time, I work with a contractor who does get 30% up front for mm -hmm. materials. 
but he's reputable. He does job after job after job, and you can research. So there's a way to research yes. the good guys against the bad guys. Yeah, you have the Better Business Bureau, uh, legitimate websites, uh, Google reviews. Even mm -hmm. you know if if you see a, a large you know an abundance of Google reviews, then there's a good chance that it's a real business. Yeah. But if if Billy Bob comes to your house and, and says he'll do your floors and it's an extremely good price and he asks for 20%, mm -hmm. there's a good chance you won't hear from him again. Right, right. Yeah. You know, one of the other scams that I've seen on Facebook is um, all of a sudden you can buy a 2009 Tahoe for $2,000. Well, that's not real. Yeah. You know, it's not real. And, and people will call, they'll, I can't get in touch with this guy. I've called him six times. He's not calling me back. I want to buy that car. That's the best buying a car I've ever seen. No, if it looks too good to be true, it is. Absolutely. And a lot is. of those Facebook market scams, they'll, they'll put a product on Facebook Marketplace and they'll request that you pay them. Mm -hmm. And then once you pay them, the ad will go away mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and they'll advertise something else. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah. Um, I tell you another thing, a lady told me that, um, somebody was selling stuff on marketplace and saying just uh, come by my house and pick up the stuff and leave the money on the porch well the stuff didn't exist but she'd say oh really well it was there i don't know what happened Did it? go ahead and leave the money my husband must have sat it in the garage then i'll sit it on the porch well no wasn't her house wasn't her stuff but she got the money yeah. and you're like holy cow how do people dream this stuff up yep uh, if it's if it doesn't seem legitimate it's probably not yeah yeah I always try to meet somebody if I were buying or selling something. I'm like, because because I gotta see you, I gotta trust you, I gotta know it's real. You know? Yes, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Before you give a dime, yeah, have that product yeah, in your hand. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And um, the people now, you know, everybody goes to marketplace and everybody sells everything. But Cole, what'd you say? You said something. Craigslist scares me yes, to death. Yeah. Craigslist, my my child has bought and sold so much stuff on Craigslist, and every time he tells me, oh, I found a, a, a bow I'm looking for, I found this, and I'm like, where are you going? 10 o'clock at night, I'm going to Hall County to pick it up. I'm like, that's, that's like you could get murdered. Mom, don't be so negative. And I'm like, are you crazy? You know, yeah. it scares me to death. Absolutely. If you, if you are going to conduct business on Marketplace or Craigslist, uh, make sure when you have your when your transaction takes place, it's in a public, well lit mm -hmm. area, mm -hmm. not at 10 o'clock at night. Right, right. Um, I know some some places their local law enforcement has uh, exchange cameras mm -hmm. in, in, a, in a lit area at a right. precinct. Right, I've seen that. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and that makes sense because we all, you know, we buy and sell stuff all the time. Yes, ma'am. And and that's reasonable, but um, again. It scares me. It just, it scares me if it's too good to be true. I gotta tell you a story and you, uh, my late husband is no longer here, but he, he wanted to get his daddy this certain kind of dog. And I grew up in Atlanta. So he told me the address where we were going and it was on a Sunday afternoon. And he made the wrong turn and we ended up in a really, really bad neighborhood. And my poor husband, I said, if you ever look at another Atlanta advertiser again, I'm going to kill you. I said, don't you ever get me in that position again. Because he took us into the, and I said, the dog wouldn't have lived in this neighborhood. This was a very expensive, very nice dog, according to the ad. And when we got down there, I said, use your common sense. Look at where we are. These people don't have this dog you've come to look at. Well, see, you fell for a scam. He fell for a scam. Yeah. And we were in my brand new 1998 Suburban, and it was a really, really rough neighborhood. And I said, if we get home with my car, we're going to be lucky, you know. Yeah. But we fell for it, and it was in the Atlanta Advertiser, and that was 20 years ago. So scams aren't something new. It's just, it's more, man, it's everywhere. Well, unfortunately, it's not the local scams that are the big concern. You know, we're, we're losing so much of our money internationally. Mm -hmm. And a lot of that money is, is used to fund terrorism, believe it or not. That is so, crazy, yeah. yeah. And you said this large amount from Pickens County ended up in, is it Bangkok? Yes. yes. Oh, no, excuse me, uh, Hong Kong. Hong Kong. Yeah. Okay, yeah. What are the odds of ever getting that back? It, no. The money's gone. No. Yeah. And, if, and if these people lost $233,000, then how many more people and how many millions? And so we wonder why the world is in the shape it's in. Absolutely. It's because we keep supplying them with money. Absolutely, and uh, we just have to educate ourselves and sometimes make a what might seem to be a social tough decision mm -hmm. to be rude and, and 
def, you know, not answer somebody's question or mm -hmm. hang up on them, not answer their email. You know, that's something. Um, I got one of these calls one day before I have this spam thing on there, and they kept saying, is that okay, ma'am? And he had a very foreign accent, and I said, no. Because I had heard that if they record your voice saying yes, then it gives them authority to do something. And that was something on one, I can't even remember who it was, a talk show or something, where somebody said, well, you just have to avoid saying key words because they will record that and then use it in a bank transaction. Or they're very, they're very smart about how they can use you. And so when I got these calls years ago, I would go, no. No, no, <laughs> no, no. I was terrified to say the word yes. Yeah. Well, and it's scary. We're at the point now where if you don't recognize a phone number, Hang don't answer it. Yeah. There's no reason to answer it. There's no reason to answer all of these phishing emails. Um, phishing is essentially when people send out multiple emails randomly in hopes that somebody opens it. Mm -hmm. Opens it. Mm -hmm. and once you open it, uh, you might possibly have introduced a virus to your computer or at minimum, you've, you've begun a conversation, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and it's just going to continue. You were talking about how they control your computer. Once you give them permission, say, wasn't that an Amazon scheme where they needed to get in the computer? Well, there, there's applications out there, like TeamView is one, where somebody, and they're, they're legitimate. You know, it's a, like I've had Apple. Um, I've had them work on my yeah, computer and done remotely. that. Yes, yes. Um, but the bad guys also have access to these types of software where they can with your permission remote into your computer and at that point all is lost because now they've got all your information mm -hmm. the best thing to do is if, if you go that far and you realize crap I messed up get off the internet mm -hmm. disconnect your internet and at least that way um, hopefully they haven't gotten your information or your banking information because once they have all that they could they don't need you they can take whatever they want uh, wow. How safe is online banking? How do you feel about that? Well, unfortunately, on online banking is... It's part of what it, we do. It's part of what we do. Yeah. Um, I don't make large purchases online, personally, and I use online banking essentially to monitor my account. Mm -hmm. I log in um, via the same application every time. Mm -hmm. um, I don't log on to my online banking from uh, unknown sources, so I wouldn't go to your house and log on to my online banking from mm -hmm. your computer. Mm -hmm and that's just how I mitigate risk. Mm -hmm. so. I got a call, I was doing my taxes about five years ago and, and uh, I looked down and I said, where's that money? And so I called my bank and they said, there's no money in that account anymore. And I said, where is it? And they said, oh, well you used it at Target. I said, uh, I don't go to Target in Mableton, Georgia. Are you kidding me? Yeah. Somebody had gotten into my, and it was my little, I had a little savings account that I just left sitting there and I didn't use it. And then about once a year, I'd use it to pay taxes or whatever. And somebody had attached to it. And I think they said I had used a debit card at a gas station in Pickens County. And they had had several cases where, what is that they do when they read your card, a card reader? at the gas pump where you put it in okay. and then yeah, they have they, one of those things that they can they have attach. a false reader yes yes and that, that happened to me and that's another thing you can look for is is when you go to racetrack or qt or or any gas station uh, look at the card reader that you're inserting your card into if it looks like it's been tampered with or there's something covering it then there's a good chance that one of these criminals have installed a device on it mm -hmm. and go to another you know notify the attendant but by surely go to another gas station. Mm -hmm. Well, two times my cards were attacked. One was a debit card, one was a credit card. And one, it was buying gas, and it was a local gas station in Pickens County, and, and it was on the west end, and they said, you know, somebody just, and there were multiple cases that happened there. And then the other time, I was flying and going through the Atlanta airport, used my credit card. And then the next morning, there was a large purchase, purchase on that card in Chicago. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, I ain't going to Chicago. I ain't going to visit Chicago. I don't want to be in Chicago. And I called him and I said, number one, I don't know where Nordstrom's is in Chicago. And I have not been there and they'd spent $1,500. Oh, wow. And I was like, how did that happen? Because I just used my card as I was boarding a plane. Yeah, it's... It's, it's crazy. It, the, there's multiple ways that they gather your information. And uh, it's impossible to tell sometimes exactly how 
they were able to get so it. So how safe are our credit but cards? How safe are our debit it, cards? It's scary. You're, you're not safe anymore. And like I said, the best way you could defend yourself is by monitoring. And also, if you're older, uh, make sure that you have a younger family member or friend or somebody that you trust that can help you and answer questions for mm -hmm. you. And, and that's key. That's key. That's yep. key. Yeah. Yeah. Well, if, if you were sitting at home and you've gotten some of these scam calls, if you something has happened to you, you need to let people know about it. And it is embarrassing, and it is, you know, but, but you need to stop it, and you need to not trust people who say, oh, just let me help you. But, but those calls, like the power company, they said that's one that recovers tons and tons of money every year, or doesn't recover, takes scams tons of money because it's only $300, $500, $600. And so people just, oh, well, I need to pay my power bill. And then they call their power company and no, your power bill was paid already. Absolutely. So they, they, it's almost an urgency. I don't want to be sitting here without my electricity. I don't want my phone turned off. So, but question all of those calls. Absolutely, question everything. Yeah. It, you have to, in mm -hmm. order to stay safe, you have to question anybody contacting you in a business manner. It's, it's imperative. Is it safer, like auto, auto debit for, I, I try to do that because it's so convenient. So I do like auto debit for this, auto debit for that. I think that's a safer way. So you know your utilities are paid, you know this, you know that, whatever's paid. Um, and then when those people call and say, well, you haven't paid your power bill. Oh yeah, I did, you debited my account, stupid. Yep. You know, so it makes you know that your account's gonna be paid. And you could also reference the phone number if they call you from a phone number without a local area code, it's mm -hmm. not going to be ETC. Right. Or it's not going to be Amicolola. Right. And so just the, the common sense things that we need to look at, if the person calling you says they work for ETC and they have a foreign accent, there's a good chance that... They don't. That they, you know. If they don't sound like me or, or you, they don't work here. So, yeah. yeah. Uh, and, and I think there was a scam a, a few months ago. We got an email that there had been a scam, and I don't know if it was people calling or attaching your emails, but ETC did have that issue at one time. And, and they attack everybody, you know? Well, yeah, it, and you don't know until it's happened. Mm -hmm. and, and that's just one of the clues you can look for. Um, if, they're, if they're from a local company like ETC and you know, they sound like they're from another country, you need to just do a little bit of homework. Mm -hmm. Call ETC, mm -hmm. say you were contacted by somebody and they requested this information and a payment for this. And there's a good chance that ETC will say, well, that wasn't us and that was Didn't fraud. Didn't happen, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. If, um, when you got the call on the $233,000, did you kind of sink to your knees and say, what can we do? It, well, we immediately went and spoke with the victim and it did everything we could to try yeah, and yeah. stop any transactions from going forward. How um, quickly did they call for help? It had been approximately a little less than a week. Uh, yeah. We, were, we yeah. were out of the timeline as far as being able to do anything. And another thing with these wire transfers, in order for the money to be stopped and recovered, the bank receiving the funds has to be willing to end the transfer. Mm -hmm. So if you're sending it to a nefarious bank like in Hong Kong um, that's a central bank run by a communist government then you're you're not going to have a whole lot of cooperation no no yeah. no did they specifically say where the money was going what it was going to be for or was this just uh, the, the gentleman was was coached into telling the bank what the money was for wow. and I, I'm not I can't divulge right. in the detail right um, about that um, however he was coached in order to not set off red flags at the bank. Wow, you know, that's crazy. It's, so, it's upsetting. Yeah, it is upsetting because this is a life-changing, life-altering, we'll never recover. Um, can't do it. No. Can't do it, no. can't do it. Well, thank you so much for being here today and I hope that this is informed and I hope that y'all are like me. When you look at that dang phone that says spam, don't pick it up, don't talk to anybody. You ain't got nothing to say to them people. Ain't nothing they got to say that's gonna be informative. And, and my big thing is the emails because I do get so many every yes, day. It's almost tempting to, oh, what is this one, what is this one? But I've gotten to a point that I read and review just the line and if it's somebody I don't know, click delete. Absolutely. Yeah, delete. It's just as easy as hanging up the phone, 
deleting them from your life, but if you do need help, please call 706-253-8900. Uh, well, that's, that's uh, our local sheriff's office in Pickens County. Okay. So if you're a Pickens County resident then and you want to make a report, um, if it's an emergency, you want to call 911. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, but that is the sheriff's office phone number that I, that I provided. Right. Um, also, if it's an elder person, you have adult protective services. Um, and IC3, if you have been a victim and you want to report it and you don't want to talk to law enforcement due to embarrassment, mm -hmm. still report it to the FBI, let them know. Um, and try the, although it hasn't worked for you, hopefully it'll work for somebody else, is the do not call.gov. Yeah. To limit, hopefully limit the amount of incoming calls that you have mm -hmm. that are potential scam. And you know, it, it's so, a lot of elderly people I know wear hearing aids and talking on the phone, sometimes it's hard for them to communicate. And so they miss hear sometimes and they think, oh, now is that what they said or is that? Yeah. So you just agree with what they're telling you to do because you're not sure you're hearing them correctly too. And I think that's really scary. Yeah, uh, you definitely don't want to have a conversation with somebody having to do with funds and money if you're not 100%. Right. You want right. to have all the information. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, so, but no, no legitimate business is going to conduct business over the phone unless you're the one initiating it. Mm -hmm. So if they're initiating it, then more than likely it's a scam. Mm -hmm. And especially with Social Security, please don't fall for that, y'all. Don't, no. don't fall for any of this stuff. And even if somebody tries to befriend you in the grocery store like this happened to this elderly gentleman and his family was like, what happened to him? Where is he? We don't even know where he lives now. It was kind of a weird situation, but this person just attached himself to him. And yes, it's, it's very, there's some evil out there. I hate to say it, but there's some evil out there. There's also some good out there. And I got to say good morning to 102-year-old Mrs. Holyfield that is now being taken care of by the Bible lady. 102 years old and she still is an amazing beautiful lady and uh, Miss Vicki is taking care of her and uh, it just blows my mind. I don't know that I want to be 102 and still working. I don't know. Maybe it wouldn't be too bad. Thanks for being with us today, y'all. Uh, tell your friends, tell your neighbors, stay safe, stay secure, take care of what is yours and don't let anybody come in through the internet, through the phones or through your doors and get it. So. Uh, if you need any help, pick up the phone and call Pickens County and they will uh, direct you to this handsome young man. He's a handsome young man. Is that your wife? No, ma'am. No. <laughs> <laughs> Bye, y'all. <laughs>